Welcome everybody to our little Bible study. Um, there's a very strong wind outside, but I'm not complaining because I know that over on the East Coast it's really Arctic weather. So, um, you know, there's a purpose for the wind to knock all the leaves out of the trees so we can start fresh. So anyway, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 is our subject today. And um, let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, um, Father God, it's in your beloved Son that we come before you, dressed in his righteousness, because we have trusted in what Christ has done for us on the cross. He died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. We thank you, Lord, that um, you did everything that was necessary to save our souls. And you gave us all the spiritual blessings up front. Somehow you helped us to hear the gospel. And we believed. And now that we have received salvation, we want other people to have salvation also. And not only that, we'd like them to come to the knowledge of the truth. So Lord, I pray that you would use this Bible study to bless many people. And that you would give us all wisdom and enlightenment as to what your, you are saying in the scriptures. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so um, there are three books that we use to worship. We use the Bible to worship. We use the hymn book to worship. And we use the pocket book to worship God. And um, we're going to be talking today about grace giving. That's our subject. So, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, um, it's about grace giving. Verses 1 through 6 is the example of the churches in Macedonia. And um, 7 through 15, the example of Christ. Give proportionately. 16 through 24 is three trusted representatives to deliver the money. So, um, do you think, this is a question for, my, uh, for everyone here, do you think that it was in the heart of God to bless and to care for the little flock in Jerusalem? Yes. Very good, yes. And Maureen is shaking your head, yes. Yes, it was. And so, in chapters 8 and 9 of 2 Corinthians, Paul will talk about the collection for the saints in Jerusalem. So this money is not going to the body of Christ. And it's not going to him and his ministry. But there are several places in the Bible which talk about individuals and churches that gave to Paul. And we're going to cover some of those too. But the main emphasis of this collection is for the poor saints, the little flock in Jerusalem. So, um, I want to say that there are still many principles that we can take from these chapters on how we should uh, do grace giving. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's see what else we got. So, um, while Paul was in Macedonia, so let's look at our map. You might have to zero in on this. Okay, so let's refresh our mem memory as what has happened so far in um, Paul's life. So Paul was in Ephesus, and there was a riot. And Patty, it would be best for you just to take a look up here and don't write anything for a little while. Okay. Okay, so he was in Ephesus and there was a riot there. So he went to Troas and he waited there to have Titus, who he had sent to Corinth, meet him there. But Titus didn't show up. So um, Paul went on ahead into Macedonia. So while he was in Macedonia, which is this northern part here of Greece, um, it was its own country back then, but... 
you have uh, Philippi, Thessalonica, and Berea very close together. So while Paul was there, these churches came to him and gathered to him and were talking with him and said, we want to partner with you and send some money to the poor saints in Jerusalem, which is over here in Judea. Okay? So, uh, both Paul and Titus were very excited about what God had put in the hearts of these uh, believers in these churches. So, Titus said, I will go to, back to Corinth. I volunteer to make, get them to collect some money there. For, um, to, to also contribute to the poor saints. Because they had said that they would about a year ahead, uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. So Titus is going to go back now to Corinth to, and um, co make a, the collection that they had already pledged so that it will be ready when Paul arrives. So Paul then decides that he's going to take the long way to Corinth so that they have time to make the collection. So Paul goes from Macedonia over here, over all the way up to the Dalmatian coast, to Illyricum, and then he goes back south to Corinth. And a lot of the maps that you find in the Bibles are not um, accurate, because they leave this uh, little part out. So. In God's Secret, I don't know if you can zero in on this, mm -hmm. but this map is accurate because the uh, third apostolic journey of Paul, it does show him going all the way up to Illyricum. So let's read, let's have someone read in Romans 15, 19. Um, Patty, you want to read that? Romans 15, 19. 15, 19. Okay. Okay. Uh. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Okay, so at the end of Romans, which was written from Corinth, when Paul finally got there, he said to the Romans it, that his gospel was preached all the way up to Illyricum and round about everywhere. Okay, so I just want you to have that clear. So um, let's talk about some other instances in the Bible where people gave to Paul. So um, Acts 16, I mean, Acts, um, what did I say? Six, uh, 16. 14, 14, uh, 16. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah 14. 14 uh, was it 1614? Uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay, go ahead, um, I think it was Patty. Okay. So this is a time when Lydia gave to Paul. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. Okay, um, did, what, did you, can you include 15? Uh -huh. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, if ye, be, if ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Okay, so she, she opens her home to Paul. And so um, now we're going to give the example of Onesiphorus. Um, can you please read that in 1 Timothy 6, 1, 16 through 18? The other one was Acts 16, 14, and 15. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a oh, pattern. That, that's not it. That's not it. Okay. Let me see. Uh, 1 Timothy 16 through 18. Is that, are you at 1 Timothy 16 through 18? 1. Um, I'm chapter talking to one? Maureen. Yeah, uh, chapter 1. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's it's, see. It's, does it mention Onesiphorus there? Um, it, could be, it could be in 4. 4, 16 through 18. Anyway, 
We'll, we'll, we'll skip that part. Anyway, he, he does give uh, Onesiphorus, um, yeah, I think it's in 4. Try 4.16. 1 Timothy 4.16. Okay. Take heed unto thyself and unto thy doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. All right. Maybe it's not there. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's there. It could be 5.16. It, um, anyway, mm -hmm. it could be... Uh, it could, oh no, 2 Timothy 1.16, let's there try that. There you go. Yeah. That's where it is. That's where it is. Oh, oh yeah, there it is. Okay, 2 Timothy 1.16, go ahead. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, Onesiphorus, for he ought refresh me, and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently, and found me. Okay, so this one ma man, when Paul was in the dungeon in Rome, he, you know, found out exactly which dungeon Paul was in, and he took care of Paul when he was there. So this is an example of an individual caring for Paul. Now let's take an example of a church that cared for Paul. So um, keeping in mind that this collection is for the poor saints in, his, in um, Jerusalem, okay? So, Patty, mm -hmm. could you read um, Philippians? Okay, let me see. Philippians 4, 3, and 16. So you're going to skip. Philippians 4, 4, 3. 4, 4 3. 3. Philippians 4, 3. Okay. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help who those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Okay, so there was women that labored in the gospel with Paul, and also a man, Clement. Now, Patty, go to 416. 416. And for even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Okay, so the Philippian church sent to Thessalonica to help Paul. So, mm -hmm. um, now let's take a quick look at our review sentence from chapter 7. Corinthians comforted Titus, Titus comforted Paul, Paul comforted Corinthians. So that's our review sentence. Oh. It, it was sort of a triangle. Mm -hmm. One comforts one, and then another com is comforted, and then he mm -hmm. comforts another. Yeah. So before we get um, into our actual study, let's take a quick look and refresh our memory about who Paul was. Paul was um, Saul of Tarsus and um, he, let's see, Saul of Tarsus wanted eternal life more than anything else. There was a sect who persisted in proclaiming that the imposter Jesus of Nazareth was the Messiah even after his death. Thinking he was serving God Maureen, could you read John 16, 2? Paul thought that he was serving God by having Stephen stoned and also by persecuting the little flock. Go they ahead. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. So... Saul thought that he was doing God's service by persecuting the little flock. Mm. So Saul zealously persecuted the little flock, even participating in the stoning of Stephen. When God appeared to him on the road to Damascus, Saul asked, Who art thou, Lord? Mm. And he was like he's thinking, oh, Please don't say Jesus. Please don't say Jesus. Mm. But it was. It was Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. And so, um, Paul was shocked and disgusted with himself for not recognizing all the signs. He had committed the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost 
and had no chance of eternal life. Um, according to what Jesus had said in Matthew 12, 31, 32. So that's when Jesus said that, you know, you can't blaspheme the Holy Ghost and you, because you won't have a chance for eternal life in this life or in the life to come. So, um, Paul uh, was upset. But the Lord Jesus Christ extended mercy to Saul and made him Paul, his apostle to the Gentiles. As it says in 1 Timothy 1.13, um, can you do that, uh, Patty? First Timothy one thirteen, okay. and Maureen, can you do um, Acts twenty six fifteen through eighteen? Thirteen. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious? But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Good. Um, Maureen 26, 15, Acts 26, 15 through 18. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto them for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. So, the Lord Jesus Christ made Paul his minister at that point on the road to Damascus. And God began a new dispensation and was forming a new group of people, the body of Christ. So, he began the dispensation of grace, forming a new group of people called the body of Christ to live in the heavenly places. So, our, um, the book set are for us is Romans to Philemon. The rest of the Bible is about the king and his kingdom. So, um, we can find out more about Paul's, um, dis the dispensation of grace in Ephesians 3, 1 through 9. But we're not going to read that right now. Paul would not be able to live in the kingdom on earth with the nation of Israel. But he would be able to have eternal life in heaven with this new group. Of believers. So now Paul is helping those he once persecuted in Judea. He calls Peter and his group the Israel of God. Patty, can you read that real loud? Galatians 6 16. Go, Patty. Oh. Galatians oh, oh, oh. 6 16. Okay. Uh -oh, I got because this little flock is the believing remnant who are to be the nation of Israel. Maureen, can you find Matthew 21, 43? We're almost ready to start our study. Okay, Galatians 6, 16. Yeah. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy and upon the Israel of God. So the Israel of God is the little flock. Um, now, the, the reason they're... Um, Patty, can you go to Galatians 2, 10? And I'll have you read that in a minute. Um, go ahead, uh, Maureen, with Matthew 21, 43. This is why there is called the little Israel of God. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Okay. So the kingdom of God is going to be taken from the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and given to a nation the little flock, the believing remnant, Peter and his group, bringing forth the fruit of faith. So, um, Paul had promised to help this little group called the Israel of God, the little flock. So, Patty, let's hear the promise that's in Galatians 2.10, and read it real loud. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was, forward to do. So, Paul had promised to take care of the poor. We're going to go into why they're the poor in a little while. Now let's get started with our study in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Okay, please join us in your Bibles. Okay. So, um, Maureen, can you please read 
verse 1. Moreover, brethren, we do you we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Okay, Paul wants the Corinthians to know. That's to wit means to know. Okay. Oh, to wit. Okay. About how the grace of God is working in Macedonia. Mm -hmm. Notice churches in this verse is plural. Mm -hmm. And may include the churches in Philippi, Thessalonica, and possibly Berea. Patty, can you read Acts 20, verse 4? You have to be fast around here. <laughs> yeah. And we can look along. We can look along because this is an important verse. Okay. And there accompanied him Asia. Into so, Asia. Into Asia. Sopater of Berea and of the Thessalonians Aristarchus and Saguntus and Gae. Gaius of Derby and Timotheus of and of Asia Tychius and Trophimus. Okay. So these this is the group of men that accompany Paul with the money to go to Jerusalem to give to the little flock. Mm -hmm. So notice how from um, into Asia Sopater of Berea Okay, so there is a representative from Berea. That's why I believe that the Berean church also contributed to this purse. And there was a representative from Thessal the Thessalonians, well, two, Aristarchus and Secundus, um, and Gaius of Derby. So maybe the church in Derby gave two. Mm -hmm. And in Asia, Tychicus and Trophimus. So they were from actually from the Ephesus. So mm -hmm. all of these churches are being, um, you know, have representatives bringing money. Um, it was in the heart of God to care for his little remnant of believers in Jerusalem. So he's put that love and, and that desire in the Macedonian churches. Patty, can you read um, 8-2? Um, oh, 8-2, okay. Uh, How that in a great trial of affliction the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. These churches were giving liberally out of their abundance of joy and deep poverty. Um, despite being persecuted. Um, go ahead, Maureen, with verse 3. For to their power I bear record. Yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. Paul gives them credit. That's what the power is, to their power. For deciding to give to God on their own. This was something that God did um, mm -hmm. in them. Um, Patty, verse 4. Praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. So they begged and urged them to take their donation so that they could partner in blessing the poor saints in Jerusalem. Um, Maureen, 5. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Okay, so the those people in Macedonia, they've given themselves to the Lord first, and then they gave uh, themselves to Paul and his group by the will of God, because that was the will of God. They, um, they did this beyond what Paul could have hoped. Paul said that they committed themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. Uh, Patty, verse 6. Insomuch that we desired Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. 
thrilled about their desire to contribute. They want Titus, who has helped them to be solid grace believers, to finish the same grace in the Corinthians. So look back in verse 8-1. See here, Moreover, brethren, we do to you to wit of the grace mm -hmm. of God, so it's that same that um, bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. So now he wants that same grace to be come to fruition in um, the Corinthians also. But go back to six one. Look back in your Bibles to six one, and I'll read that. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Mm -hmm. So, it also has to do with if you didn't receive the grace of God in vain, you're going to want to give. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, um, verse 7. Maureen? Yeah. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, and utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. So God gave the Corinthians more sign gifts than any other church. So um, God gave Paul and the Corinthians sign gifts to show the Jews that God was now working with them. And it says in 1 Corinthians one twenty two that the Jews require a sign, but the Greeks seek after wisdom. So, the um, Jews required a sign, so they could see what God was doing. The people of Israel said, Hey, they have our gifts, so God must be working with them. Mm -hmm. And the Gentiles said, We have their spiritual gifts, which God gave to the Jews, so God must be working with us. They abounded in the temporary spiritual gifts because the Corinthian church was next door to the Jewish synagogue. Utterance is the gift of speaking in tongues or other languages that had not previously been learned. Mm. Knowledge is the gift of special knowledge of what God was doing that he revealed first to Paul and then to them. Remember that these sign gifts ended along with Paul's provoking ministry to the Jews at the end of Acts 28. So um, in Acts 28, 28, Paul said, you know, that's the, your last chance. I'm not, I'm going to the Gentiles now. And he did. Mm -hmm. And um, this is also covered in Romans 11, 11, where it says that the Jews stumbled at the cross and they fell so that um, the Gentiles now could have a chance at um, access to God without going through the Israel. So after Paul had received the complete revelation of the mystery, even though it was not all written down yet, um, the sign gifts would end. Paul had told them that in 1 Corinthians. Um, 13, 8 through 10. Uh, for more information on that, see um, my book, 1 Corinthians. And um, so, um, let's see. So that's it. The sign gifts in, uh, that they would end was, was in 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 10. So uh, the list in Galatians. Oh, uh, spiritual sign gifts, this is important, are different from spiritual graces. The list in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, which says the fruit of the Spirit is love, mm -hmm. you know, this and that and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, that whole list are graces of the Spirit, not signs. Oh, graces. Paul wants them, yeah, exactly, Patty, graces. Um, Paul wants them to be sure to abound in all diligence in love for Paul and his workers and in grace giving, which are also a result of the Spirit in the believer. So, 
we still we don't have the sign gifts anymore, but we do have the graces, and they're a result of Jesus' spirit, the spirit of Jesus Christ, the life of Jesus in the believer, living itself out. So um, let's do uh, verse eight. I think it's—is it your turn, Maureen, or Patty's? I, I think it's yours. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others, and to prove the sincerity of your love. So Paul is not talking to them by commandment of the Lord, but because of the initiative of the other churches, who have taken it upon themselves to be involved with God's work. You know, it just makes sense, you know, that they should do the same. God wants to use them to provide for the poor saints in Jerusalem. The other churches had already completed their offering. They had put their money up, so the Corinthians should do the same. Paul is not requiring them to give, like under the law. He is inviting them to prove their sincere love of what God is doing by giving voluntarily. The saints in Jerusalem were poor because Christ had told them that they should sell all that they had. Uh, go to Luke 12, 31 through 34. Okay. Let me get there too. Hold on. I want to just make sure I have this right. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Patty. Why don't you read that real loud? But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have. There it is. Sell that ye have. And okay. give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Okay, so they're going to put their, you know, they're going to believe that the kingdom is at hand, and they're going to sell what they have, uh, because, um, and then we're going to see in Acts 4.32. Maureen, can you go there? Well, I'll, uh, it was, we won't go there. We won't go there. Um, we're, I'll just read it. Okay. They sold what they had, and they had all things in common. Remember, it was mm -hmm. kind of like a communism. Mm -hmm. they, they shared it all. Mm -hmm. Because they would not be able to buy or sell during Jacob's trouble because they could not take the mark of the beast, as it says in Revelation 13. 17 and 18. Let's go there. Uh, Maureen, you want to read that? Revelation 13, 17, and 18. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score and six. Which is six hundred and sixty-six. Okay, Jesus had asked a rich young ruler to show his faith in the gospel that the kingdom of God was at hand by selling all that he had too. Patty, can you, um, well, let's go to Luke 18.18. 18. This is about the rich young ruler. Mm -hmm. Luke 18.18. 18. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Keep going. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, 
yet lacking thou one thing, sell all that you all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. And when he heard this he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. Go read all the way to twenty seven. Okay. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they that heard it said, Who then shall be saved? And he said, All things which are impossible with men are possible with God. See, it was more important for that rich uh, young ruler to enter the kingdom of God and have eternal life than to hold on to his possessions. But it was hard for him to let go. Okay, but because Israel fell in Acts 7, and uh, we have that in Romans 11. Let's go to Romans 11 again, just because these 11, 11, and 12. I'll read that. Okay. Okay, so, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. So, remember when the Gentiles had their signs? You know, that they, they should have, mm -hmm. you know, they say, hey, they have more signs, right? Mm -hmm. So, that was a, a, to provoke them to jealousy, so that they would realize that God was working with Paul, and the Corinthians, so that they would believe and uh, come into the body of Christ. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? See, because uh, Israel fell in Acts 7, now we have the riches of God. And the riches of God is having eternal life, see? That's mm -hmm. what really matters. Mm -hmm. Remember, that was the most important thing to Paul. Mm -hmm. We started with that. Mm -hmm. um, God postponed the tribulation and began the mystery. So now the persecuted saints in Jerusalem were poor. Because mm -hmm. they had obeyed Jesus. So verse 9, Maureen. 8-9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. So Paul gives the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ as an example of giving. The Son of God laid aside his glory, not his deity, and became a man, and then humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Let's go to Philippians 2, 6 through 8. Okay. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and it took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So as a man, he could shed man's blood and die. Because God is spirit and he can't shed blood and he can't die. Mm -hmm. He satisfied the justice of God. And he was the propitiation, a fully satisfying sacrifice. He shed his perfect blood so that by faith believers can have his righteousness. This is how the Father can remain just and justify the believer. The Father sees the believer dressed in the righteousness of his Son and can accept them. Um, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, fully satisfying sacrifice. So, um, this is, I'm quoting now Romans 3, 25 through 26. So, um, 
whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. And propitiation is a fully satisfying sacrifice. But I'm going to pause in the middle of this verse, and I want you to go over to Isaiah 53, 10 and 11. Isaiah 53, 10 and 11. And the word propitiation is found a couple of times in the Bible. Um, but here it's not found, it's, but it talks about him being a fully satisfying sacrifice. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. So here we have Christ being offered um, for our sin. Well, actually it was for the sins of Israel. Um, because, see, if you go up to verse 8, at the end of verse 8, it says, My people. So mm -hmm. it's, he's doing this for his people. Mm -hmm. he sh um, so we go let's continue. An offering for sin. He shall see his seed. Um, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. So he, the Father, is going to see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. So um, that is, see how he was satisfied in those verses? Mm -hmm. And so the Father was satisfied, and then when Paul came along, we learned that Christ not only died for his people, but also for the whole, you know, the gen all all people. Mm -hmm. So um, let's go back to this verse I'm quoting. Um, Who God has set forth to be a propitiation, a fully satisfying sacrifice, through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Through, so He's declaring His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Through the forbearance of God to declare, I say, at this time, which is the dispensation of grace, his righteousness, that he, the Father, that he uh, is the Father there, might be just and a justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. That's Romans 3, 25, 26. So because we have his righteousness, um, the Father can remain just and justify us. Okay. We have atonement now. As it says in Romans 5.11, And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Mm -hmm. He gave his life a ransom for all, as it says in 1 Timothy 1, 6, I mean 2.6. No one can outgive God. He spared not his own son, as it says in Romans 8.32. He suffered in our place as our substitute, as we found out in 2 Corinthians 5.21. But the Lord also rose, and so will we. Let's take a look at 2 Corinthians 4.14. It says, Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus Christ shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the sinner... Who tr the sinner who trusts that Christ's blood paid for his, their sins do not get the wages of sin, which is death, but the gift of God, which is eternal life. And that's in Romans 6.23. Patty, could you please read verse 10? 8.10. Okay, 8.10. Um, uh, and herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you, who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Okay, so Paul gives practical advice. He does not command them. To expedite their giving, they should just continue to carry out the pledges they made and began a year ago. Mm. In 1 Corinthians, Paul had told them exactly when, the frequency, and how to collect an offering for Jerusalem. 
It's going to be every Sunday a portion of their excess, as God had helped them to prosper, should be gathered. Let's see that for ourselves in 1 Corinthians 16, 1 through 3. Can you read that please, Maureen? 1 Corinthians 16, 1 through 3. So we're going to look for all of these instructions here. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every, ma every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And when I come, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, them will I send to bring their liberality unto Jerusalem. Okay, so here we have it. He said that um, he's already given these instructions to the churches of Galatia. So, you know, they're also in on the giving to the poor saints in Jerusalem. Um, so, that on the first day of the week, so that's on Sunday, so that's the frequency is every first day, every Sunday. Every one of you shall lay up by him in store as God has prospered. So it's from, you know, as God has prospered them, their excess. That there be no gathering when I come. He doesn't want his visit to be about collecting money. So um, then when Paul comes, whosoever they have appointed to go with him, will go with him to deliver the money. So, um, this contribution is for the poor saints in Jerusalem, because the nation of Israel fell, salvation is coming to the Gentiles, the riches of the world, the riches of the Gentiles. As we just read, the Gentiles, which is people of all nations, now have an opportunity to have eternal life by faith in what Jesus has done. We Gentiles have access to God now, which we did not have before, as we read in, read in Ephesians 2, 11 through 13. Let's go there, let's go there, just, just to see it. And um, It says, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called the uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So the Jews called, uh, are the circumcision, they call this the uncircumcision. Mm. That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. So that was a Gentile condition before the dispensation of grace. But now, this, we're living in the but now period. Mm -hmm. Christ Jesus, uh, but now in Christ Jesus, ye, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. So we were far off, we had no chance, but now we have chance. We have been made nigh during this dispensation of grace. So, um, it was not the believing remnant's fault that the nation of Israel did not believe them. The little flock did their part. Gentiles have an opportunity to be spiritually blessed during this dispensation of God's grace and Israel's national blindness. So let's go to Ephesians 3.2 and then um, Patty, Ephesians 3.2 and Maureen, um, Romans 11.25. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word. Okay, so it was given, uh, Paul became Christ's minister to minister the dispensation of God to the Gentiles, um, and, and God worked through him. Okay, Marine verse, um, Romans eleven twenty five. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. 
-hmm. So the nation of Israel at, at the, is blinded during this dispensation of grace. Um, so they can bless the little flock because God wants them to. Let's read Romans 15, 25 through 28. These are important. I have these starred and underlined. Romans 15, 25 through 28. And I'll, I'll read these, but I want you to see them. But now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. So Paul is saying this in his letters to Romans, which he wrote after 2 Corinthians. So he's going to go to Jerusalem to minister to the saints there. For it has pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. It has pleased them verily, and their debtors they are, for if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. When therefore I have Perform this and have sealed to them this fruit, which is the money, I will come by you into Spain. So Paul says that he's planning to visit Rome after that on his way to Spain. So um, this is um, where he, he says that, you know, the Corinthians did, in fact, make the collection and he has it in you know his hand now and he's going to go to Jerusalem with it so it's important to note that the little flock died out in the first century they did not continue mm. believers have his love now so you know now we in the dispensation of grace have his love not the little flock anymore we have his love mm. Today Israel is in apostasy. We do not need to bless that nation, but the Jews need to hear the gospel of Christ as much as anyone else. We should witness to all people, both Jews and Gentiles, but we should give to people and groups that will handle money wisely. We are not to oblig obligated to pay a debt we never incurred. Uh, verse 11, Patty. Okay. Now, therefore, perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. So, perform the doing of it. In a few words, Paul gets to the heart of the matter. Okay, there's one thing to say something, and there's a whole different thing to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk is cheap. And since you had a will to donate, now do what you've said. Words are good, but actions are better. Give out of what you have. Verse 12, Marie. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath and not according to that he hath not. A willing mind is necessary first. Thoughts precede actions. Give according to what you have, not according to what you do not have. Paul advocates proportionate giving, a percentage of a person's income. This is the only fair way of giving since people have varying amounts. A flat tax without loopholes is also the fairest and best way to tax people and businesses. A tithe is a tenth, a proportion that precedes the law. Let's go to Genesis 14.20. Genesis 14.20. And blessed be the Most High God, which has delivered thine enemy into thine hand, and he gave him tithes of all. So um, Abraham gave to um, Melchizedek 
uh, the king of Salem, tithes of everything, a tenth of everything that he had uh, gained in that war that he was in. So um, a tithe is a tenth. So he gave Melchizedek a tenth of everything. In Israel's program, the Jews gave up to 30% of their produce for religious and governmental service. Still, a tenth is a fair amount for rich and poor in any dispensation. We are not under the law, but under grace, and we can give more if we want to. Giving is a privilege. It is natural to want to support a ministry that blesses us. Turn to Galatians 6.6. 6. Galatians 6.6. 6. Patty, you want to read that? It's howling outside. But not like back east. Not like back yeah. east, that's for sure. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. So here, let him that's taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. So that's, you know, financially. Um, we have even, you know, in our little ministry here, we've even received checks which have helped us to pay for some books that we have blessed other people with that are, you know, can't afford them. I have always said that the best way to give to this ministry here is to buy our books and to give them to family and friends that need to know the truth. So, you know, we have um, God's Secret, Romans a Concise Commentary, and 1 Corinthians, and we're working on 2 Corinthians. So, um, verse 13, Patty. Oh, oh. 13. Uh, for I mean, not that other men be eased, and ye burdened. So Paul said, my purpose is not to burden you, so others can have it easier. Mm -hmm. Verse 14, Maureen. But by an equality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. Okay, so the there, there in, in that verse, mm -hmm. when it says um, that their abundance, mm -hmm. okay, Oh, oh, their want, uh, but by an equality, by by an equality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want. The there there is the Macedonian churches. Mm -hmm. Paul wants all the churches to give so that the burden to supply the need for the saints in Jerusalem will be spread out. The Corinthians can make up for what the Macedonians could not give, and they, the Corinthians, could make up for what, I mean, the, and they, the Macedonians, could give make up for what the Corinthians could not give. See? Mm -hmm. So now he's going to use another example. Uh, Patty, verse 15. As it is written, he that had gathered much and had nothing over, and he, no, no, there's no and there. Start okay, over. Okay. 15. As it is written, he that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. So Paul uses an example from the Old Testament of gathering manna, which is in Exodus 16, 16 through 18. Um, we're going to look at that in a minute. So, Exodus 16? Yeah, and um, Maureen, you want to read that? Exodus 16, 16 through 18? Mm -hmm. So, everyone ended up with equal amounts, which is one homer. No one had anything left over in the gathering of the manna, and no one had less than, it, than any other. Is that uh, a capital E uh, on that first line, as it is written, 
he that had gathered. No, it's a lowercase. Oh. Go ahead, uh, Maureen. It, 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 it's, the reason it's a capital, okay, let me just explain this, because Patty, since you brought it up, uh -huh. okay, yeah. that capital there uh -huh. is instead of quotation marks. Oh. So it means that as it is written, he, uh -huh. with oh. a capital H, oh, okay. that means that they capitalize what the, you know, what she, instead of having a quotation mark. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Okay? Oh, That's in, okay. This is the, there is no quotation marks in the King James Bible. Oh. Whatsoever. Okay? Well, that Isn't that interesting? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Maureen. So, uh, what verse? Exodus 16, 16 through 18. Oh, okay. This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, an omer for every man, according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Israel do so, and gather, some more, some less. And when they did meet it, with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. Okay, so everyone had just the right amount, which was one one homer. Okay. Um, Patty, could okay. you read verse 16, 816? Mm -hmm. But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. Okay, Paul thanks God for the diligent care Titus has in his heart for them to also give to the poor saints. Uh, verse 17, Maureen. For indeed he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. So Titus volunteered to go back to Corinth to finish the collection there so that it would be ready when Paul arrived. Um, Patty, verse 18. And we have sent with him the, go the brother whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. So Paul sent another brother with Titus who Who's had a clear, grateful understanding of the gospel, mm -hmm. the good news that Christ gave to Paul, mm -hmm. and the praise of all the churches. What did you want to say, Maureen? Who is that brother? Um, we don't know. Oh, okay. He doesn't say. But we can we can make a guesstimate. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm going to make a guesstimate. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to make a guesstimate in a little while. Okay. Not yet. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead. Um, who, who just finished reading? Patty. Patty. Okay, go ahead, Maureen, with 19. And not that only but who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us with this grace, which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord and declaration of your ready mind. Okay, so what's this grace in that sentence? The collection? We, exactly. It's the money. Oh. It's the money. Okay? Good, Patty. So he was also chosen, the same person, that we don't know his name, by the churches to travel with Paul and his friends when they go to Jerusalem to deliver the money, the grace. Okay. We are administering this contribution for the Lord's glory and to show them, the Macedonians, your willing, ready minds. Paul doesn't mention who this is, so we, um, so uh, who this is, so we do not know. Okay. It yeah. may have been one of the men mentioned in 20 verse 4, Acts 20 verse 4, mm -hmm. okay? And so it's probably Aristarchus, mm. in my opinion, it's Aristarchus, mm -hmm. yeah. but I don't know, yeah, they don't perhaps work. Aristarchus, we'll say that. Um, now we're going to find there's another man, there, mm -hmm. there's going to be a third person. Go ahead, Patty, verse 20. Avoiding this, that no man should blame us in this abundance which is ministered by us. Okay, it's administered by us, right? Mm -hmm. So by having several people in charge of the abundant offering, we will avoid blame. That's what Paul's saying. Mm -hmm. um, verse 21, Maureen. Providing for honest things, 
not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. So we want to demonstrate an honest handling of the funds in the sight of the Lord and in the sight of men. So this is sort of like, you know, the way to handle money when mm -hmm. you're a, a church leader mm -hmm. so that there'll be no suspicion. Accountability. Accountability. Yeah, that's perfect word, Patty. Mm -hmm. Accountability. I love that. Um, verse 22, Patty. And we have sent with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things, but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you. Okay. So we are also sending along a third brother who is one of you. So... See that? Mm -hmm. Who has often proved to be very diligent in many things, but now he's even more diligent since he has the same confidence that I have in you, that you understand what Jesus is doing for you through me. Paul does not mention any name, so we don't know who it is, but it may be Erastus. Mm -hmm. Let's check out Erastus. We're going to look at Four different places where his name is mentioned. Uh, Patty, can you take Acts 19.22? And Maureen, can you take um, Romans 16.23? Oh, three places. And I'll take 2 Timothy 4.20. So we each get one. Uh, Patty, when you're ready with Acts 19.22, go ahead. Okay. So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. Okay, so Erastus there um, went with Timothy on an errand for Paul. So um, Erastus um, was used by Paul in different um incident it says go ahead with romans 16:23 Maureen. gaius mine host and of the whole church saluteth you erastus the chamberlain of the city saluteth you and quartus a brother okay so remember he's writing romans from corinth so erastus is the chamberlain of corinth so you see, you know, it takes a lot of diligence to be a cha chamberlain of some place. So this man had been very diligent as, you know, having a, an office in Corinth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he uh, saluted the Romans. Now, 2 Timothy 4.20 says, um, Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Militum sick. So Erastus went back to live at Corinth, where he had been before, see? Mm -hmm. So um, he's one of them, and, um, you know, he probably continued in that church. Um, go mm -hmm. ahead, Patty, with verse 23, and then you can, you know, do uh, 24, and we'll be done with our study today. Go ahead, Patty. Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you, or our brethren be inquired of, of. They are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Christ. So if anyone should ask, Titus is my fellow partner and helper in the ministry, and so are the two messengers of the churches for the glory of Christ. Uh, Maureen, last verse in this whole thing. Wherefore show ye to them and before the churches, the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf. For this reason, show them and the churches that you love the ministry of Jesus Christ by proving it with your contribution. This also proves that we were right to brag about you, is what Paul says to the Corinthians. Oh. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Father God, in Jesus' name, we come before you, and we thank you that um, you've shown us that we are members of the body of Christ in the dispensation of grace, and that Paul is our apostle, and you, Lord Jesus, are our Savior. So we want other people to know 
um, all the things that you've shown us. So please help us to support the ministries that are the most effective for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.